So we're exploring some of the different war bands for God tier. And in this vlog, we're going to look at Shale and Landslide. Now, visually, I have to say I was really drawn to this miniature. And all of the miniatures, the theme, what they invoke, the narrative of fighting for God tiers in the shattered land, it, it's, just, it's just absolutely perfect. So looking at this miniature, I'm a wizard dude. I'm, I get to play a wizard dude floating on like this elemental rock controlling a construct, a battle construct with a big sword forged out of the tears of gods themselves. I mean, that right there is like a, a graphic novel. So I was like, I want to play this this character and I want to really play this champion. And what I found, um, admittedly also really loving the straightforward play of Slayers, you know, essentially like Rangosh and Sneaky Pete going out, bashing skulls, doing a lot of damage, taking a fistful of dice and shaking them and rolling them out. Of course, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that because um, playing the Slayers, no one's going to let you like just run up there and, and punk them. There's going to be positioning. They're going to be trying to block with some of the followers. There's going to be um, questions of trying to pull you off to a certain area. So this way, if you do do some damage and maybe win a round, hopefully the early rounds, then you got to spend another turn getting to the other side of the board. I mean, there are ways to mitigate, but I, I feel like the Slayers, they're a good place to start because you can get points really fast and you can learn how to play the game quickly. But as we move into the other types of classes, um, and especially with looking at Shale as a, as a guardian, uh, excuse me, a shaper, this is where it gets very, very interesting because there's no real attack value whatsoever and the movement of landslide is dependent on shale so they, they kind of almost work together as a team and this narrative is kind of easy because understanding that narrative it's like well that this construct is under the control of this this wizard this shaper this sorcerer this mystic but by keeping them together what i noticed was um it's it's kind of two for one. It's kind of two for one. If a slayer or a powerful group of minions can make it up there, followers can make it up there, then uh, there's the possibility of killing or torrenting down both of these. And you're going to get the points for killing a large model, and you're going to get the points for killing a champion. Shale also then has to spend that turn respawning. So it's going to kind of set him back one um, rather than moving or utilizing landslide or planting that banner. So how does this work? Uh, obviously, one versus one games. I mean, I, I played a couple of games against my friend, just having him uh, run Rangosh all over the table and trying to um, play Shale one-on-one, -on -one, just, just to understand how it works and understand uh, the limitations, but also the potential combos by looking what could have been done if there were other warbands on the table. And what I noticed was he wants to play in a three-champion game. Taking it to, uh, you're spreading the resources really, really thin because in a three-champion game, uh, the two powers that I've noticed was the ability for Landslide and the ability to um, push and pull objectives with champions on that objective, ideally champions on that objective. This idea of being able to pull one of your champions into literally a, a, a mosh pit, into a pit of um, followers that can deal a lot of damage or other champions, not necessarily slayers all the time, that could deal a lot of damage. So they'd be able to like, kind of like suck that god tier objective forward and just punk whatever's on it. Um, massively powerful. Uh, likewise, sometimes being able to push away based on that space. Having this idea where, especially if it's comboed with a ranged unit, to be able to constantly have this wall pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. So that means Shale and Landslide working together, they're not going to be frontier. They're not going to be, uh, if we take the gaming board and you have your deployment zone, my deployment zone, and then in the center band, the midfield, you know, kind of divided into these three bands, you're not really venturing into the midfield. You're kind of hanging back. The other way I was utilizing it, and that's, that's certainly powerful. 
I mean, that's that's powerful, but it's going to come down to synergy and play style, having a very a more passive type champion versus just kind of going up and, and smashing things. I won't even say a support champion, more of an environmental, uh, literally shaping the god tier, shaping the board itself and how that interacts. But what I've also noticed in three champion games is uh, the ability to just... And now this is a question if it's worth it, because there's so many warband combinations. I'm not even like remotely there cracking all of the different combinations. But what I have noticed is if I'm playing three and I have two more aggressive warbands pushing that forward, if Landslide gets killed, okay, that gives you the point, and that's going to shift the um, the tracker in your favor. But then the fact that he kind of becomes terrain. Now, that's an auto plant banner every single turn. So if I can get Shale killed in the backfield, not that I'm trying to, but if he does get killed in the backfield, excuse me, landslide in the backfield, then if I can flush out anything else you got back there, secure it, leave it, just have him farm that every single turn. You know, plant, 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 and and get that banner going. That's that's just like a free plus one. Um, you know, along with his synergy that when you plant it, you move on the tracker up plus one. That's some nice little insurance. That's some nice little backfield type insurance with how it plays out. So a very very supportive role. And I have to say, going in, I was expecting more of like a sorcerer, elementalist, shaman, magic user type vibe, but he is a shaper. He's shaping the god tiers. He's controlling it. And I think it's a more kind of a guarantee every turn, getting those points for planting the banner, getting those points for the god tiers. Is that worth it with the under com- other combinations? Can't see it in a one warband game. Two, well, now it's 50-50. You don't necessarily have all your bases covered, but three, um, given the diversity, even if you go with a dual build, one of the colors, taking two of those war bands and then the green for your third under shale, uh, I think there's some, some trickery. There's some guile with how it can work out.